For about two weeks each spring, Mother Nature offers up one of its true superfoods, and that is pine pollen. So the eastern white pine standing right behind me is now producing pine pollen, and I thought I would take a few minutes to harvest some, and we'll talk about just why it is something you really need to consider foraging for. So I'm standing on the shores of Susie Lake here in the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes Wilderness Area, watching the dragonflies float over the top of the lake, grabbing up anything that moves. And I wish they were grabbing up a few more of the horseflies that are flying around my head. Man, I hate horseflies. Okay, eastern white pine. This is the time of year when they start producing pollen. So they can pollinate the cone. So what we're looking at right here, and I'll be bringing some down for a closer look. This is the male pollen cone for the white pine. And if I flick it, you can probably see the white powder that's coming off of it. So it's emitting the pollen right now. And that's to pollinate the female cones, which will eventually, eventually produce the seeds to further propagate the tree. So I am going to take some time. And if you look up, I don't know how well it shows, this tree is full full of it. There's more than I could ever hope to harvest on this tree. So I'm going to take a few minutes and see how much I can get and we'll do a little uh, discussion on pine pollen. Okay, one more thing before I start harvesting any of these pine pollen cones is how am I going to do it? And uh, I've been trying hard to figure out how I could put this camera somewhere to capture myself doing this, but there, I'm on the very edge of the lake as you can see and uh, if I find another tree somewhere, I'll set it up and we'll, we'll do it there. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in and pull the whole cone off and place it in a bag that I have with me. So these cones are just starting to release their pollen, so they're still going to be good for a while. They're not going to you know, release all their pollen. I'll be able to take them home and dry them out. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But the alternative to pulling them off is to, if you just want a little bit and they're already releasing pollen, Grab a paper bag or a plastic bag big enough that you can fit over the end of the branch and just shake the branch like, like that and you'll see pine pollen come out and you'll collect up some. Now, if you were to do what I'm going to do, which is to take the whole pollen cone and take it home and let it dry for a couple of days, you'll get at least twice, maybe three times the pollen that you would have gotten otherwise. So that's why I like taking the whole pollen cone with me. So now I'm going to put the camera down, collect up a bunch of these pollen cones, and we'll have a further discussion on the true value of one of nature's true superfoods. So here's a little cool trick that I kind of uh, just put together for to help myself out here on the edge of the lake here. Uh, the branches I'm, are out over the water and I'm having trouble reaching them, pulling them down, holding them with one arm. So I took a little Y stick, tied it onto my walking stick, and if it works right, I should be able to pull it down and with the rope at the bottom, hold that with my foot and be able to just have my hands free. So let's give it a shot. Well, that works out pretty good. I got a long way to go though to fill this bag, so I gotta get back at it. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just trying to fill the bag, and I have a couple of plastic bags, gallon size or liter size bags, that I'm gonna try and fill with the pollen cones. And we'll pick up this discussion when we get home because I wanna dry them out a little bit, and then I'm gonna show you how I process and get most of the powder out of the pollen cones. But before I do that, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a close up on the, this. Now remember again, this is the Eastern white pine, and I'll tell you why I make that distinction in a second, but nice and close up. What you're seeing here is just a little cone, the male cone of the tree, the pollen cone. Uh, when this first starts to emerge, uh, probably about a week or so ago, it would come in as tightly clustered green, look like little green berries, all tightly clustered together. And as they grow, they start to spread out and change color towards the yellow. So what you're looking for is 
when it gets to be yellow. If it's any much past yellow, you're probably a little too late. If it's got that rusty brown kind of a look, then it's probably already released most of its pollen. So it's always good to get out multiple times into the woods and then just keep an eye on the, the pollen cones to see how they're progressing. I've often done this when they are still green and tightly packed, is pick them up and pop them in my mouth because they, they're like a juicy berry, a little bit powdery in texture, but more juice than anything else. Uh, great health benefit as we'll talk about in a few minutes time but it also gives me an indication how close it is to to time because once they're ready the tree seems to be already at the same time and the slightest breeze and I don't know if you're seeing that coming off of these things but the powder just a little tiny breeze and you get a wave of yellow powder gliding across the lake so that's what you're looking for is a yellow yellow cone about that size now why did i say this or make the distinction this is an eastern white because one what i found so far is that uh, we have three pine trees native to Nova Scotia. We have the eastern white, which I'm picking from now. We also have the red pine, and we also have the jack pine. Well, the red pine and the jack pine came out about two, well, almost three weeks ago is when their pollen cones were ready. I was surprised how much of a difference in time it was before the eastern white was ready to come out with its pollen cones so I was able to I'm actually getting two harvests because uh, in closer into the urban area there's all kinds of red pine none in my immediate area there is some jack pine I was able to pull some of these off of around here but I was able to harvest quite a bit earlier three two to three weeks ago and come out again get a second harvest off the eastern white pine is there a difference no not really all pines have pine cones or pollen pine or all pine cones have pine pollen. It all has the same benefits. There's very little difference. You'll never see it in what it looks like or in the taste. And I, from my understanding, there's no difference medicinally. It's all the same. It's all super medicinal, super nutritional as well, as we're going to talk about in a little while. So it's been a few days since I was out in the wood collecting the pine pollen cones and now I'm back at home in my kitchen and in a minute I'm going to show you how I process the pine pollen down for storage. But before I do I just want to take a moment to talk to you about why it's maybe something you want to consider and that is foraging and harvesting and using pine pollen for yourself. But before we begin, like with all edible and medicinal plants, you must do your own research to confirm that this is something safe and of value to you. For that, for that reason, I'm going to be putting some information in the show notes below to allow you to look into it much further, because I want to keep this portion of the video relatively short. There is a lot of information out there that you can access. Okay, so pine pollen is not new. It's something that's been known to mankind or humankind for a long time. There is evidence that the Chinese have been using this for well over 2,000 years, both as a food source and as a medicine. And that's the way I want to break down pine pollen for you, is how it is of nutritional value as well as of medicinal value. So nutritionally, pine pollen is a rather complete food in and of itself. 30% by weight, it is a complete protein and, ha and is something you can add to other foods to boost the protein levels and, and uh, gain the benefits from that. It also has carbohydrates and it also has well over 200 vitamins and minerals. So it is rather a good food all by itself. So if you are out in the woods and you have the opportunity to harvest and, and collect some pine pollen, you can add it directly to what it, whatever it is you're cooking. Putting it in bannock is my favorite way of doing it. It just seems to go well with baking. Now, you do have to mix it with flour, if you, especially if you want to get something to rise and, and get some size out of it. But otherwise, um, it's, it's just a great addition. You can put it in soups. You can put it in just about anything. You can bake it into cookies. You can mix it in smoothies at home. So there are a number of ways you can consume pine pollen from it for its nutritional value. Now, you are also getting some of its medicinal value from consuming it from that raw state. But if you really want to benefit most of the medicinal value, you need to extract it out with alcohol. That's the way that the experts say is the best. So in order to do that, you buy weight, and there is a ratio that I'll talk more about at the end of this video. You simply mix your, your processed pine pollen and with a certain ratio of alcohol that has a certain percentage of alcohol in it, leave it set for a period of time, strain off the liquid, use that in small dosages on a regular basis, and that's how you gain the medicinal value of it. So medicinally, what is it good for? Well, number one, it is an immune enhancing 
medicine all by itself. So I think that's something we could all use in this day and age. It's something to boost our immune systems to help fight off whatever it is that presents itself to us. At the same time, it's also an adaptogenic, and by that I mean it's good for reducing stress levels within the body. Now, stress is, comes in all forms and from all sources. It's not just the stress we feel at work and from all the pressures of our daily lives. It can also come from the food we eat that's less than ideal. It can come from pollution in the environment as well. So an adaptogenic medicine helps restore the natural balance in our body. Speaking of natural balances, one of the biggest things that, that uh, pine pollen has going for it is that it is a strong natural source of testosterone. So this is vitally important to men, of course, over the age of 30 and getting into my age and on. Our bodies stop producing naturally occurring testosterone. And if we want to regain some of the benefits, then we're going to have to supplement that. And you want to supplement it in a natural source so that it doesn't have any harmful effects on your body. Now, this is not just for women alone because pine pollen also helps to balance that the, all the hormones in the body, especially the testosterone and the estrogen. And again, I said I wouldn't get into that at any depth because there is so much information available to you out there. Basically put, pine pollen helps as an anti-aging medicine. It won't make you younger, but it should help to slow the aging process. Okay, I think we've talked enough about uh, pine pollen as a food and as a medicine. And again, I will have information in the show notes below. Now let me show you how I process it for storage. All right, so this is actually a very simple process to be able to separate the pine pollen powder from the rest of the organic material to store it for later use. So to begin, you're going to need a couple of things. It's not essential that you have all of what I'm showing you here. Uh, you want to, well, take into consideration what it is I'm trying to accomplish, and I'm sure you'll find something that works for yourself. So you can see I have an assortment of strainers or screened strainers, and they have varying size holes in them. Actually, there's two sizes. This is my larger strainer that I use. Actually, I use this a lot for for coffee when I'm roasting coffee at home because it's a great way of shaking the coffee and cooling it off. Uh, I may use this one today. I'm not sure that I'm going to need to. This has the larger holes because I also have picked up recently uh, a set of strainers that have very fine holes and the finer you can get them the better you'll find that uh, the pine pollen is such that if you look at it under a microscope they look like little tiny ball bearings and they slide and move very easily they don't stick to themselves very hard very difficult you know they're very easy to move through the screens but a smaller the screen the better because you're going to remove more of the unnecessary organic matter so i'm going to keep those out for a second. I'm not sure which one I'll use. I also have a couple of jars that I'm storing it in. These are the opaque glass jars. They're called the Jing jars and these were sent to me by the owner of Vita Jing uh, and there is a link I'll put at the end of the video here to where I talked about a product that he did send me for testing. This is exactly what these jars are really useful for is storing this type of material, protecting it from the sunlight and keeping them dry at the same time. So this one is already full. This one is only about half full and I suspect that's all I'm going to get out of the amount that I'm, I'm going to process here today. So I'll put them aside for now. I've also got a canning funnel. Uh, necessary? No, but it makes the job a lot easier to get the pine pollen into the jars when I'm ready to do that. Now the star of the show is the pine pollen itself. So what I did when I got home from the woods is I wanted to wait a few days for the pine pollen to dry or all the organic material to dry because what I have found through experience is, is if you leave it dry a few days then the, the little cones that the pine pollen is in actually dry and open a bit more so you're going to probably double the amount of powder that you're going to get out of that organic material rather, if, rather than if you did it right away when you got home. So what I did when I got home is I took a cookie sheet and I just spread this out in the cookie sheet to give it its maximum amount of airflow and over the next couple of days what I did is as I separate it this is all the pine uh, 
needles and other parts of the pine palm cones that I, uh, you know, it was a little indiscriminate when I was trying to get them off of the tree. It's a little hard to find just the cones and not get the pine needles. So I took it all and I only ended up with not quite a full gallon uh, Ziploc bag. When I got home, that's about all I had. So I, you know, I just took, a, took the, my time and pulled the needles out because I did need to wait a few days for it to dry anyway. Now, I didn't throw it away because there is a lot of pine pollen that stuck to these needles and we're going to get that off first. What was left is these are the little tiny pollen cones that you saw in the earlier video and already I can I know that then a lot of the powder the yellow powder is settled to the bottom here in fact you can see it on the inside of the bowl here. It's a very mild taste to my finger. Um, ever so slight a bit of bitterness but you know not certainly not objectionable at all. I don't think you'd even, well I don't, taste it in baking or anything else. In fact what I do, and I'll show you doing this at the end, is some of it's going to stick to the bowls regardless. What I'll do is I'll just rinse that with water and pour it into a glass and drink it. Why waste it, right? Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to take the larger of my sieves, and actually I think I will use that large one to start with and all I want to do is just make sure I get all of the powder out of what these needles before tossing them or composting them here. So I'm just going to put them in and shake them around a little bit see if I can't get a little bit more of the pine pollen powder off of them. There's not much on this you know this is uh, if you're worried about saving time uh, you don't have to go to this extra step but uh, you know you might as well see what you can get out of them some of the needles are falling through. That uh, was not unexpected. But for the most part, I think I've got most of the powder out of it now. You do need probably two bowls to do this because you're going to be moving it back and forth through the sieves to kind of get some of the pine pollen out. Okay, I quite a few of the needles fell through. So I'm going to take a second just to remove these needles and then I'll bring it back and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, I didn't bother spending the time getting all of the pine needles out because it's not really necessary. The screens, the next couple of screens that I put it through should capture more of those pine needles. I was just trying to make it a little easier on myself and still get the most pine powder I could out of it. So again, I'm going to need a bowl to collect the pine powder in. I'll take my sieve or screen or whatever you want to call it and just gently pour this in. Uh, this is not something you want to do outdoors, by the way. You want to do this indoors because it doesn't take much of a breeze. I don't know if you can see this when I tap the bowl, the powder that's just falling down. You want to capture as much of that as well. You don't want this blowing all over the kitchen. Being as careful as I am, there's still pine powder. I'll, I'll still be wiping a fine dust up just off my immediate area. So be aware of that, that it does have a tendency to travel. So you want to minimize the shaking while still getting the, you know, the pine powder loosened. Oh, there's a lot in there. So this is going to take a minute. Oh, it's coming through though. Okay, so I'm going to continue to do this for a second just to, because it does take a minute to shake and get all the pine powder released from those little cones into the bowl below. And when I've gotten it down to a state, probably before I do screen it again, then I'll show you what it looks like and we'll do it one more time. Okay, I went ahead and put the pine pollen through the sieves that I had uh, a number of times just to separate as much as the other organic material as I could away from it. Uh, this is what I ended up with and I know it doesn't look like a lot but I want you to remember first off I started with probably three quarters of a, a quart or gallon size Ziploc bag so it wasn't that I had a whole lot of uh, to begin with so in, yeah it is a little bit labor intensive if you're trying to get the powder down to a point where you can use it for a medicine. If you're just trying to get it to a point that you want to bake it into breads, then you don't have to be quite as fussy about getting all that organic material out because it's not harmful material at all. It's in fact what you're seeing inside there now, let's see if I can get you up a little closer, 
is there's a little bit of brown flecks on top of the pine pollen and it does rise to the top as you shake it. And that's kind of like the bran in wheat is the best way to, to think of it. It's the fine organic material that was the outside of those pine pollen cones that just kind of broke down small enough that it made it through the sieve. If I had finer sieves, I could keep going with that and get it till it's just a pure yellow color. But for the purposes of making medicine and certainly for the purposes of putting it into a food that you're baking or cooking with or whatever, then this is plenty fine enough and plenty processed enough. So the only thing left for me to do is to put it into my ginger. Um, pine needle got in. I, at this point, I just want to mention, and something I could have mentioned earlier, but you're probably, if you're following my advice, is, which was to do your own research, is my understanding, and, and, and I can't say this from personal experience, but my understanding is, is that pine pollen gets a bad rap for being an allergen, something that causes heavy allergy response in people in the springtime. My understanding is that pine pollen is very low on the allergen scale. In fact, it's likely other pollens that are people are reacting to because at right about that time of year, there's a whole lot of trees and plants releasing pollens all at the same time. But what happens is, is when people come out in the morning and look at their car and it's covered in that yellow, yellow dusty powder, which is likely pine pollen, they attribute their allergies to the pine pollen because it's the one they see. But more than likely, it's the other pollens in the air that are causing the allergic effect. Now, that's not to say that some, say that some people aren't allergic to pine pollen, because I'm sure there are. I'm not. It hasn't affected me. But if you are someone that you know for sure it's pine pollen that you're allergic to, then you may want to look at this differently. Also, my understanding is if you were to use the processed pine pollen, creating a tincture with alcohol, that same allergen is no longer present at that point. Again, I refer you back to the research to go have a look at it yourself because I would, wouldn't want anybody to discard the value of pine pollen just because they believe they are allergic to it. Make sure that it's something that you're allergic to before you discard it and even then consider whether or not it's something you want to take in tincture form. Okay, like I said, all that's left for me to do is to get it into this ginger for storage and it goes in easy. I'm gonna make sure I get it all in and not lose it. There we go. It's a little dusty to work with. I think I already mentioned that so be aware of that. Now there's pine pollen all over the inside of the funnel. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a second. All right, there's my pine pollen, all ready for storage. Now, the question might be, how long will it last in storage like this? Well, uh, if it's dry, and that's important, of course, you don't want any moisture left in this when you, when you do it. So that's another reason to leave it set for a few days in a dry place for the, for the pollen, uh, for all the organic material to dry out. If it's dry, it should last almost indefinitely. My understanding is that there has been pine pollen found in ancient sites that is still of value today because that little spherical ball that I mentioned is a very good protected against the outside world and it has to be a digested or at least uh, rotted in moisture rotted or uh, you know allowed to sit in moisture before it'll break down and uh, and lose its potency so I'm going to put that away now it is dusty and I am a little bit yellowed over as I mentioned but I have two bowls right now that have pine pollen all over the inside of them so I'm going to take a second to rinse those bowls, collecting up as much of that yellow magic as possible. And I'm going to pour them into a glass that I have here. There's one. If you leave it set in the water for a minute or two, it's going to uh, settle to the bottom. So. It's a good idea to stir it up just before you drink it so that you can get most of it in suspension. There we go. Okay. 
Let's refocus the camera. I'll enjoy this and we'll finish up this video. Okay, it took me a minute to reposition the camera. I just want to show you the pine pollen is starting to float to the top. So I'm going to stir that up. And drink that down to get all the benefit I can. You know, I've heard people say that it has a bitter flavor or a slightly bitter flavor. Do you know what it reminds me of is a very mild pine needle tea. So if you like pine needle tea in the woods, um, this has got a very similar flavor, probably a little, even a little bit more mild than the tea does. Okay, so I'm going to close this video up. But before we do, I said I would talk about how I'm going to use this. Now, I could save some of this and use it in baking, like I already mentioned. But I'm going to be using most of it to create tinctures from. So in order to create a tincture, it's very easy, in fact. And you just do it by a ratio of a 1 to 5. And that means 1 of the pine pollen and 5 of alcohol. And uh, what that means is, for instance, uh, I'll use hopefully about 100 grams, and I am using metric because it makes this, this part of the math so much easier, 100 grams of pine pollen by weight and 100 grams of a pure as alcohol as I can get and mix them together, shake them up, in a jar, like I'll put them in a mason jar, put it aside somewhere out of the light and wait about a month. I don't think you have to wait that long, but it, that, waiting that long will give you all the benefit, all the benefits will be extracted. I'm using a white rum I bought at the local, local liquor store that has a 72% alcohol by volume. My understanding is thing, uh, alcohols that have 60% or above are the better ones to use. So that's considered an overproof and uh, you get more alcohol in it that way. Now, in Canada, at least in Nova Scotia, the availability of overproof uh, liquors is not what it may be in other areas. So this is the only one I could find, but it is a white rum. It doesn't give it really any flavor. And you're only using a few drops each day. And I'm going to leave the scheduling or the amounts you're going to take and how often you're going to take to you and your research because it's very specific to the needs that you're taking it for. And again, I said I would provide information where you can find out more about pine pollen in the show notes below, but I would encourage you that to start watching the trees as you get out in the woods, more often in the spring, is watch the pine trees for the formation of those pine cones, those pine pollen cones. And when you start to see them turn yellow, then get your collection bag go and get as many of them as you can, get them home, dry them out, process them, put them into storage in some way, or turn them and use them as a food or use them as a uh, tincture for med medicinal value. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. If you have any questions about pine pollen, I will try and answer them in the show notes below or I'll refer you to somebody I know who knows more about it than I do. If you have any other questions at all, then please put that in the show notes below or in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now. Hi folks, quick update. Two things I wanted to tell you about. First off, I did take the pine pollen that I harvested and turned it into a tincture. I used that over the early part of the winter and did find value in it. Now, I won't say that it was dramatic and made an immediate difference, but over time I was able to experience some very positive benefits from it. I found that I had more energy and more endurance throughout the day. However, it didn't last all that long. Unfortunately, I ran out of it before too long. I'm going to have to get out and harvest some more this spring. However, I also then reached out to my friend Dean at the Vitaging and purchased, he didn't send these to me, I did purchase some pine pollen from Dean. Now, Dean has sent me some of his products before in the past as a thank you for making videos, but this time I felt I, I owed it to him and to you to actually purchase this and tell you what I thought of it myself. So again, I bought this pine pollen and I've been using this now for a few weeks. And again, I'm starting to notice the benefits of the pine pollen. So all I want to say there is if you can't get out and, and harvest your own and you're looking for a source of pine pollen, then Vitaging may be a place that you can look. And I'll put the information for the Vitaging products in the show notes below. Okay, that's all I have to share for you today. Thanks very much for watching.